special greeting to those who may just have joined online. When I was a young priest, when I was newly ordained, I was uh, assigned to the cathedral, St. Mary's Cathedral, or the Basilica as it's known. And every Friday and Saturday, I would be on call for all the hospitals in the entire city. And I have to say, it was quite an experience. They were often very busy days, and you would get multiple calls. I used to have a pager. Does anyone remember pagers? And it was quite a a moving experience that that, um, I, I still remember many of those interactions. But there was one hospital that I dreaded going to. was the children's hospital. You know, priestly ministry or any ministry often puts you in touch with people who are suffering, people who are going through hard times, but there's nothing like suffering children to challenge your faith right down to your toenails, right? Seeing little babies full of tubes to see the pain and the hope and the questions in the eyes of parents There was always one question, often unspoken, sometimes spoken, and you know what that question was. Why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to us? Why is this happening to her? Why is God doing this? There were times when I honestly wanted to turn tail and run the other way. I remember literally standing outside of a a hospital room almost like in a panic attack because what was I going to say? You know, I'd studied theology. I can give a theological analysis, a theological perspective. But these were real people, and suffering was no longer an abstraction. Human beings have been struggling with the question of the suffering of the innocent since the very beginning. You see, we all have an innate sense of justice. So we're, we're kind of instinctively inclined to believe that everyone gets what they deserve. That's the way we're oriented. Um, And when that doesn't make sense, and in the case of the suffering of the innocent, it certainly makes no sense, then our simple and simplistic categories are challenged. The ancient Greek philosophers struggled with this question, as did the Jewish people. And we see this question being raised in our first reading today from the book of Job. The book of Job is a parable about this very question of the suffering of this just man and how to make sense of it. That's what the whole book is concerned about. And we heard today in our first reading that the book of Job doesn't give us a very hopeful answer to this question. Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? The author author asks. Does not the human being have a hard service on this earth? What's the answer? Hello? Yes, of course. The answer is yes. And that's the answer that the book of Job gives, but it's a yes with a warning that the why is beyond us lowly creatures. In the gospel today, we see Jesus healing Peter's mother-in-law. That evening, he performs many miracles. The gospel tells us that all who were sick came to him and that he cured many who were sick. All came to him, and he cured many, but not all. He didn't cure everyone, and this raises a few other questions that often haunt believers. Why are some people healed, and why are others not? I mean, has that ever bugged you? Yeah. Why does God seem to answer some prayers and not answer other prayers? You see, we all have questions 
with which we struggle. And I'm sure if we had more time, we could identify even more of such questions. Sometimes we seek answers to them, but often we just ignore them or we avoid them, fearing that our faith may not be able to stand up to the reality of our questions and doubts. But here's the thing. The path to a mature faith is not to run out of the hospital or to avoid difficult questions, but to grapple with reality and go deeper into our faith. I mean, do we honestly think we're the first people to ever think about those questions? Many have asked these questions. Many have wrestled with these questions, and many have proposed answers to such questions that haunt the human heart. And our Catholic tradition is incredibly rich. There's much to discover. And I believe that our faith is not made weaker by such doubts and questions, but that it is made stronger when we face them and seek to move beyond a child's understanding and sometimes a childish understanding of faith to an adult faith. <clears throat> and I know Jesus says, unless you become like a child, but that's not what I mean. Becoming like a child doesn't mean we become childish. But the only way for this to happen is to actively seek to grow and mature in our faith. For all of us to actively seek to grow and mature in our faith. In less than two weeks, we will begin the great season of Lent. And led by the teachings of Jesus, the church proposes to us three disciplines during Lent. Fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. Fasting is about giving things up, praying. And almsgiving is about giving to the poor over and above what we normally give. Now let me ask you, what's a question that people often ask one another, or Catholics often ask one another during Lent? What's the question? What are you giving up? Which of those three does that refer to? Fasting. See, we, we focus, rightly so, on fasting on Lent, but we also have a tendency to almost exclusively focus on fasting. Um, but it, it's only one aspect of Lent, and if that's all we do, we will miss the great spiritual opportunity to grow and mature that Lent offers us. So, don't let your Lent just be about chocolate. Now, there's nothing wrong with giving up chocolate, but Lent is a season of renewal. And the Lord wants to renew our faith, to make our faith new, to bring us to a new level, to help us to grow towards maturity. Not eating chocolate or fasting in isolation will never bring this kind of renewal. We need to be intentional about growing towards a mature faith if our faith is to survive, let alone thrive. In this society and culture that's so often anti-faith, often anti we need more than the bare minimum of coming to Sunday Mass. We need to delve deeper into our faith. We need to grow in our understanding of faith so that we can enunciate our own answers to life's difficult questions. Those answers come from our own processing, our own understanding. We need to deepen our relationship with God if we're going to persevere through the times, as the book of Job says, the human being has a hard service on earth. And it's not just about thriving, it also is about surviving. And I want to speak briefly to some of our parishioners who are new Canadians. And we have probably 40% of our parishioners are, are new Canadians who have come from other cultures that are more religious the Canadian culture, and that means every other culture outside of other than Canada is more religious than Canadian culture. And here's what I'd like to say, that the way your parents lived their faith and passed it on to you, that's not going to work in Canada. You can't rely on that strategy to pass faith on to your own children. Just ask some of our parishioners who's children have been lost to an aggressive, secular, and atheistic culture. I mean, something like 95% of our young people in Canada have, have, have become disconnected. Don't let that happen to your children. 
For all of us, we need to be intentional about maturing our faith. It's not enough just to go on Sunday. We need to be intentional about growing our faith and the faith of our families so that we can mature and flourish. And so this brings me back to the question of Lent. It's a season of renewal. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about all the opportunities that we have in our parish for people of all ages and all schedules to engage in growing their faith during Lent. Okay? So the rest of the homilies are commercial. So the first opportunity during Lent is our annual parish mission, our Lenten mission. Now our mission is like a spiritual retreat for our parish. And the main sessions will be on three evenings, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday evening. We'll also have two morning sessions as well. It's a time to come together to pray, to hear inspiring talks, and to experience God's love in a new way. And our mission director is a good friend of mine. His name is Bishop Scott McCaig. He's the uh, Bishop of the Military Ordinariates. He's the Bishop of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force for all, all the Catholics. And we were in the seminary together. He's a good friend. I'll tell you a few things about him. He didn't grow up Catholic. He became Catholic in university. Um, we've traveled a little bit together, and he drives a Harley, like a big hog. He actually drives one of those things. Uh, so a biker bishop, and he just published his first book on the Holy Spirit, and I've asked him to make the theme of the mission about the Holy Spirit. So the mission will be from 7 to 8.30, Sunday through Tuesday on February 25th to 27th. And I, I think it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be a great opportunity to grow in our faith. And so that's the first thing I want to put out there for you. As you heard last week, we also have our next session of Alpha coming up. It starts this week, and it's going to be actually on Wednesday mornings starting at 9.45. It's, erect, it's actually almost full of it filled up, which is absolutely fantastic. But it's a great place to start. If you haven't been involved in anything, it's a great place to start, to deepen your faith, to renew your relationship with God, and to help others even who might not be connected with church or may have become disconnected to rediscover a relationship with God through Jesus. And so that's on Wednesday morning. Archbishop Dunn has asked all the parishes of our diocese to offer an experience of small groups during Lent. So I want to speak briefly about the small groups. And a small group experience is when six to 12 people will sit together and discuss and share faith. You know, someone once said this, that the problem in the church, one of the problems in the church today is that for most people, their experience of church is sitting in a row. And we need to sit in circles. Because most of us, our experience of faith is, is just looking at a talking head. Some guy up front doing all the talking. We don't talk to each other. We don't look at each other. We don't share faith with each other. And when we do that, it's an amazing way to grow and find clarity about what we believe and, and to go deeper. We've already been offering several small group faith experiences for several years at our parish, but we're adding more for this Lenten season in the hope that many more people will choose to get involved. And it's actually incredible what we have to offer. We have small groups that will be running on Monday mornings, on Monday evening. We've got small groups for Wednesday mornings, Thursday, or Wednesday evenings. No, morning. Sorry, I can't read my own writing. Thursday evening and Friday evening. We've got lots of different options. Each of these groups have a different focus, but they all have the same purpose, to help people grow in their faith. And in addition to these groups, we also have uh, men's and women's groups on Saturday morning. We have a youth group that meets on Tuesday evening and family groups that meet on Sunday. My goodness, I feel tired even just going through this list. That's a lot of stuff. We've got something for everyone and for every schedule. We've got something for every age, every single day of the week. But wait, there is more. We also have several opportunities for prayer. You know, during Lent, it's cu customary to go to daily Mass. Uh, we get roughly between, anywhere between 20 to 60 people at our weekday Mass at 9 o'clock. And we also have Eucharistic Adoration on Friday morning, and we're looking at having Eucharistic Adoration on one of the weeknights 
during Lent as well. That's a, a wonderful opportunity to pray. Okay, so, so much stuff, right? And it's all for you. We're doing this for you to help you grow and mature in your faith so that your faith may not just survive but thrive. So here's what I'm asking of you. Number one, to visit our website. Visit the parish website, ourladyofguadalupe.ca. It's all there. All this information is there. Look through what's offered and pray about this. Pray about what is, how is God calling you to grow and mature, to take a step during the season of Lent. Discuss it with your family. Maybe even come up with a, a growth program, a plan for your family. And... Choose something. Choose something to, to do during Lent. Or two things, or three things. But for God's sake, don't let your Lent just be about chocolate. 